Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim where I've just completed a most astounding flight in the F111 by AVSM HD slash GKS. Uh, I have been steadily pushing the range of the F111 during the course of my all country tour, uh, but I made a mistake in plotting this particular flight through the Pacific Islands initially. This is uh, flight 23. And the mistake was that French Polynesia has gotten country status. I did not realize that. And uh, they do not participate in the Olympics. I basically had a list of Olympic teams that I was going off of for doing the all country tour during the Olympics. But having to add that the French Polynesian Islands, I added Bora Bora in particular. Sorry, Tahiti, I didn't get quite out to you. Uh, but adding that meant uh, extra stretch. And also there was the Cook Islands, but the Cook Islands do have uh, an Olympic team. So that was also a mistake. And that added a long stretch that I had not originally planned for. But I had been getting so much range out of the F-111, I decided to see if this was possible. And as you can see, it's a plot of 5,717 nautical miles. And I'm taking off from Pompeii International in Micronesia. And that was where I concluded the previous flight, of course, and landing in Fiji. And so we're landing at the main airport in Fiji, Nadi International. And uh, what we're going, we're, we're going through uh, to the Marshall Islands, to Nauru over here, uh, to which one was this? Um, let me just check. That is Kiribati. Uh, Kiribati is big. Uh, I'm going for the like the westernmost Kiribati. There's a lot of Kiribati to the east. Uh, Kiribati keeps going and going and going, really. Uh, uh, I, I'm pretty sure these are Kiribati, too. So there's a lot of Kiribati. Anyway, uh, so Kiribati. And then down here, uh, that is... Let me check. Tuvalu. Tuvalu. And so these are all countries, folks. And then Samoa and Western Samoa. So Samoa is over here with uh, the clock tower and central bank of Samoa. This is West, uh, American Samoa. American Samoa also has an Olympic team. Anyway, it was along the way to Bora Bora. And so there's this, this long leg out to French Polynesia. I fly over Bora Bora and then come back. Cook Islands down there. Uh, this is, uh, I think this is Niue. Um, yeah, I think so. And then down to Tongo, down there, and then to Fiji. So that is the flight. And I actually have the flight path in little nav map that I already did, and I'll show you. So here's little nav map, and what it does is it actually has a dotted line for your flight path. So you can see uh, previous to that, that was actually the previous flight. And then here's the dotted line for where I actually flew. You can see I had to turn corners here and head down, dotted line there, big turn at Nauru, and then a turn at Kiribati, over to Gilbert Islands, that's part of Kiribati, and uh, Tuvalu, you can see the dotted line continuing. Uh, what? Oh, oh uh, it doesn't like to continue the dotted line across the date line, or the anti-meridian maybe. Okay, well, after have to stay zoomed out to here. You can see the dotted line there. Ah, it disappeared on me. Okay, there. You can see the dotted line and the turn I made at French Polynesia out, and then I put range rings at Fiji so that I could land at Fiji. And so the dotted line ends there at Nadi International. But I'll show you clips of the flight. The first thing I do is remove the external tanks from the wings, but add tanks into the weapons bay and top them off because that seems to be the best thing to do. The external tanks have extra drag and I haven't really figured out whether they're beneficial or not. Uh, we'll have to see later on. I I'm getting quite a lot of range without them, so I don't know whether I need to use them at all. So here's the takeoff. I needed to use a little bit of afterburner during the takeoff because it was a shorter runway than usual and we're pretty heavy, heavily loaded. Uh, not as heavily loaded as we can be, but yeah, the runway at PTPN uh, was 6,592 feet. So here I am accelerating past Mach 1, that entails a little bit of a dip. I only accelerate past Mach 1 at about 36,000 feet and then I lose some altitude during that. Here we are past Mach 2 at about 70,000 feet in altitude, that was the setting. 
And actually, Sky for Sims says that I was more than 70,000, but that uh, depends on the atmosphere and all. I just set to 70,000 and left it at that. You can see the fuel consumption right now as we're accelerating, 6,800 per engine, but we are going to eventually get down to 3,400 per engine because I won't be accelerating anymore. Here we are at the Marshall Islands, and this was the first island of the Marshall Islands that I'd be flying over. And it was the one with a really, really tiny airport. I don't know what the name of the island is, but ultimately we'll be going over uh, Ebon Airport, E-B-O, and presumably Ebon Island or Ebon Atoll, and that's that one right there. And that covers the Marshall Islands. This is now Runau. For most of the flight, I'll be going at a ground speed of 1,300 knots, and that equates to about Mach 2.4. So I was pushing it a little bit as I passed Nauru and had the big wide turn after that. Uh, but uh, there's a little gauge that says uh, time to go and I passed that as we approach Kiribati. This is South Tarawa as part of the Gilbert Islands in Kiribati. And so covering that country. Uh, but it didn't say slow down. It says it's reduced speed when you get to Mach 2.45. So I just went with Mach 2.4 as you can see there. And you can see the fuel consumption on the dials there below 3,500 per engine or 7,000 pounds per hour total, which gives me about four hours after getting to Mach 2. So, and we'll be lightening up, so eventually I'll be throttling down a little bit. The reason why this plane gets so much range is because it's got a lot of different afterburner steps. And I'm really close to the bottom end on the afterburner when I'm doing this, and that's good enough to hold Mach 2.4. Uh, and once we get lighter, I'll even be able to go to a slightly lower setting for the afterburner as I continue along the Gilbert Islands, which are part of Kiribati. Uh, nice little islands here and there. So that's the secret of my success for the range with this plane as we approach Tuvalu there. And I'm interested to see what it will do as far as range at a lower level where we can really sightsee. That'll be another test, but uh, this has certainly been uh, a convincing test of its range at high altitude. I could go higher, and I could push it closer to 2.45 or uh, 2.5, which seems to be its limit. And wind, wind also matters, but we're going various directions. I keep turning as I pass Tuvalu and go over Samoa. But, you know, if you account for wind, which was like 50 knots one way or another, uh, let's say a worst case scenario, we would lose because this was overall ultimately a five hour flight almost exactly. Uh, we would lose maybe 500 nautical miles in the worst case scenario. So you can think of it like that. So 5,200 nautical miles. So here we are approaching American Samoa, but it was all clouded over unfortunately. Uh, Pago Pago there, or however it is pronounced. And then out to French Polynesia, which was the longest leg between islands. This is French Polynesia right here. I hope the French Polynesians appreciate this. <laughs> I mean, uh, it was a long time to get here. If you want to see the time, it is on the Sky for Sim thing in the bottom left-hand corner. There is the uh, GMT time or UTC time. And so you can track it like that. And we are approaching Bora Bora. That's the island in front of us. Uh, though it doesn't actually say Bora Bora on the Sky for Sim map there. <laughs> It does have all those points of interest. All those little blue boxes are points of interest on Bora Bora. They really did a lot during the Pacific Island update for Bora Bora. It has more points of interest, I think, than India, which I feel like it's a little bit unfair. <laughs> maybe maybe give us a few more. I know maybe the photogrammetry is not great for India, but can you give us a few more points of interest? Anyway, uh, so passing through a few more islands of uh, French Polynesia, though not Tahiti. That would take a few extra 100 nautical miles. And I was not confident about stretching it that far. Uh, in fact, this I already thought that I might have to abort by landing in Tongo instead of going all the way to Fiji. But ultimately that decision would be made at Tongo. As we approach here, uh, the Cook Islands, and this is the particular Cook Island that I was flying over. Uh, Aitutaki, which also had a point of interest. After Aitutaki of uh, the Cook Islands, I flew over Niue, which it says New Zealand right there underneath it, but it's sort of independent. I didn't know whether it counted as a country, but 
since it was along the way, I decided to fly over it anyway. It didn't really take much extra effort. So, here is Tonga, which certainly is a country, and has an Olympic team and everything. Niue does not. And a nice runway there, too, if we wanted to land at it. But I decided I had enough uh, fuel to proceed. Now, one thing that made me nervous is there's a fuel distribution warning light that pops up. And also, Pekka, previously having flown this, said that once the fuel got a little bit low, he found some weird experiences with the engine. I didn't know what to think about that. Uh, when he got below 3,000 pounds of fuel in the tanks. So I didn't know whether that was the fuel distribution thing, what what to make of that particular situation, and how much unusable fuel I had. But I decided that, well, even though the leg between Tonga and Fiji was about 500 nautical miles, uh, I would be able to handle it. So here we are approaching Fiji. There's a airport closer, and there's an airport to, on the opposite side of the island, which is the one I plotted for. So, in an emergency, I could land to the closer one. The island is about 60 nautical miles uh, across, so it does make a difference. But I ended up overflying it and uh, breaking below Mach 1. I very gradually descended, starting at about 200 nautical miles away. And here, still gradually descending, but still nervous about that whole fuel distribution thing, unusable fuel. But I, at this point, had something like 3,000 pounds of fuel left, so I thought it would be enough. The flight would have been over a lot sooner if I hadn't descended so gradually. It would have been more like a four and a half hour flight, I feel like, instead of a five hour flight, but uh, I was very parsimonious about the fuel at the end. You could, If you saw the fuel flow gauges right there, they're basically at the bottom. So, yeah. Obviously not an afterburner. And here we are approaching the airport with a cloud in the way and also a lot of uh, stutteriness and lag. In fact, my stream dropped off. I was streaming this on Twitch at the same time and I, I think my internet connection had a hiccup or something, but the stream dropped off. There was too many lost frames or something and yeah, it was just really choppy and, and that's why I sort of floated a little bit higher. There's a higher approach than I normally do with the plane and that was just for safety's sake because of all the hiccups. So here we are, landing at Fiji, at Nadi International, and success! 5,700 nautical miles with the F-111 and not even carrying any external tanks, except for the tanks in the weapons bay, which presumably do not add any drag to the thing. So, there you have it, a Mach 2.4 in general, uh, 1,300 knots, and I ultimately had 2,500 pounds left in the tank. Which, at my full cruise speed, I was a little bit off there, at my full cruise speed would have equated to about mm, 20 minutes. So that would be maybe 300 nautical miles, 400 nautical miles, something along that. So could stretch it even a little bit further, which is why I had confidence to land here at Fiji. And yep, there you can see the gauge with 2,487 and ticking down. So with that result, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video on the extreme range of the F-111 by ABSMHD slash GKS. And if you did like the video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.